Thanks for joining us on this edition of Business Daily. Hello, I'm Lee ji Before we get started, let's first get a quick check on today's highlights. When it comes to starting a company, Korea might be the place for you, as the World Bank ranks it as one of the easiest countries in the world to do business in. Korea's private equity funds are spearheading the M&A market, and the government is stepping up efforts to help local private equity funds, despite ongoing controversies. Global credit rating agency Moody's has reaffirmed its positive outlook on the Korean economy, describing it as highly resilient despite external financial shocks. In its annual analysis, Moody's applauded the Korean government's track record of fiscal prudence, taking note of its relatively low debt ratios, coupled with an expectation that such discipline will continue. The agency gave Seoul a very high grade on three of its four main analytic factors, that is, economic strength, institutional strength, and fiscal strength, while warning Asia's fourth largest economy will still face near-term external headwinds from falling demand in China and the flat global economy. Assigning moderate to the fourth factor, susceptibility to event risk due to the North Korea element, Moody's nonetheless said Korea's exposure to external shocks has substantially receded since the global financial crisis of 2008. The World Bank says Korea is one of the easiest countries in the world to do business in. In fact, it's actually leaps and bounds ahead of regional rivals like China and Japan. Our Oh Se-young has the details. Korea is the fourth easiest country to do business in, according to a World Bank report published Wednesday. Asia's fourth largest economy has been on a steady rise in rankings these past six years, achieving a steep leap from 19th in 2009. Singapore maintained its first place for a tenth straight year, followed by New Zealand and Denmark. Meanwhile, Japan tumbled from 29th to 34th, while China rose six notches to 84th. The annual Doing Business report ranked 189 countries based on 10 indicators, including obtaining licensing approvals, starting a business, and the ease of cross-border trading. In terms of G20 countries, Korea ranked first, while among OECD countries, it ranks third behind New Zealand and Denmark. Korea's finance ministry attributes the upward trend to consistent government efforts to create a business-friendly environment through laws and infrastructure. The ministry says it will continue to improve regulations on labour, land and the environment for each industry. Oh Seung, Business Daily. Meanwhile, Korea's ruling Senate Party is looking to ratify the Korea-China free trade deal before the end of the year. But that goal might be hard to reach as the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy remains lukewarm about the trade pact. The opposition party is demanding the government first introduce measures to support the agricultural and other industries that could be hit by the FTA. But the ruling party considers such measures unnecessary, as the deal was already reached with enough safety measures to protect the domestic farming sector. The ruling bloc hopes to reach an agreement with the opposition at a meeting set for Friday and make headway in sealing the deal within the National Assembly. Seoul and Beijing approved the trade deal last November and concluded it at a signing ceremony in June. More older people are employed here in Korea compared to those living in other OECD countries, indicating that many of them are trying to prepare financially as they approach retirement. According to the latest OECD quarterly employment situation statistics, the employment rate of workers aged 55 to 64 in Korea in the second quarter of this year was 65.5%. Now, that's well above the OECD average of 58 percent. The corresponding figure for only men was even higher at nearly 80 percent. That's over 10 percentage points more than the OECD average and the sixth highest among 34 member nations. The ratio of older Korean women was also above the average, and nearly half of older workers were part-time or temporary workers.
Another record earnings for Apple, as the company announced on Tuesday that it recorded sales of 51.5 billion U.S. dollars and a net profit of over 11 billion for its fiscal fourth quarter. Beating analyst estimates, Apple saw a 22% hike in revenue from last year and a 31% on-year jump in earnings. Behind the result stands the $12.5 billion sales in the Chinese market, which almost doubled on year, and revenue raked in by the iPhone, which grew by 36% year over year. But analysts are questioning how long Apple can keep its growth streak, and such doubts led to its shares dipping below the closing price of $114.55. Although Korea has been in the salmon farming business for years now, it lacked competitiveness both in quality and quantity for exports. But a new fish farming technology developed in the eastern province of Kangwondo has made salmon farming possible all year round. Our Lee Ji Young tells us more. Dishes made with salmon farmly freshed in Korea fill the table. The result of a local aqua firm that has been raising some 10,000 silver salmon that are at the commercially viable weight of 4 to 5 kilograms. The main component of the red pigment of these salmon is astaxanthin, which helps prevent aging and is good for skin care. Asian countries typically have not been able to farm salmon because water temperatures become too high during the summer. But Korea became Asia's first country and the world's seventh to have succeeded in farming salmon due to a patented technology that moves an enclosed space of fish up and down in the water to hold the temperature at an ideal 15 degrees Celsius. Silver salmon is mainly consumed in Japan. We've also started to cultivate it with future exports in mind. Korea had some 23,000 tons of salmon last year put out in the market, but only 400 tons were caught in its own waters. The Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries says the country will be able to replace some of its imports with those raised at home, which are said to taste better and come with prices that are 20 to 30 percent cheaper. I think we will be able to produce 800 tons worth of salmon if we push for mass production. Initial pilot shipments of fish will take place from next month, with mass full-scale releases to begin in November of next year. Yi Ju-young, Business Daily. A revised capital markets law was put into place this past Sunday with the goal to relax regulations on establishing and operating private equity funds. But the public sentiment on private equity funds still remains rather mixed. Take a look. Private equity funds, also referred to as PEF, buy and invest in companies that are privately owned and try to increase the value of those firms and investments. But the public sentiment toward private equity funds in Korea hasn't been that great because many activities have resulted in clashes with labor unions over restructuring and layoffs. Adding to this was news of U.S. Loan Star funds purchasing and reselling Korea Exchange Bank, in which it ended up pocketing large profits. Despite this, the Korean government opened a local private equity fund market in 2004 to spur the merger and acquisition market and investment to provide capital for startups. Just last week, a revision bill to the capital markets law went into effect, easing regulations for PEFs. Homegrown private equity funds are increasingly emerging as big players in the recent boom of mega MNAs. But many hurdles remain, as they're still viewed in a less friendly light by regulators and the public. And to tell us more about this, we're now joined by Kim Il-sun, Senior Fellow of the Asia Institute at Sungmyung Women's University. Welcome to the program. Well, good to be back here. All right, so what exactly are private equity funds and what's their main purpose? Well, the private equity funds, or PEF, is the uh, uh, collective investment mechanism to gather funds from usually a very small number of individuals who are cash rich, uh, such as institutional investors like uh, pension funds, 
universities, insurance companies, and high net worth individuals. You know, the PEF is usually a, a structure to create high profit. So like 20% or more for PEF is, is not uh, unusual. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the, unlike the public equity fund, which has limitations on investing in stocks, uh, uh, single stock, uh, no more than 10% of their total fund, the private equity fund has no limitations on, on what they invest and where they can invest. Mm -hmm. So basically speaking, they go where the money goes. All right, but then like we saw in the report, there's still much controversy and public criticism surrounding public equi or private equity funds. Mm -hmm. Why so? Well, there were cases where the Korean companies were sold to uh, foreign uh, private equity firms and then a short time later, they were resold to other sources for a very hefty profit. Um, you know, uh, they didn't care about the fate of the company or the fate of the employees within, so that kind of created the resentment toward the foreign uh, PEFs. Uh, for example, a company called Madeline uh, Patterson, a uh, PEF firm, uh, they once bought an uh, uh, Orient Electric and sold it again for a profit, a high profit. And UBS Capital uh, sold Winnie Armando and resold it. And the, the famous one, the Lone Star, uh, bought and sold uh, Korea Ex Exchange Bank uh, with a very high profit. Well, um, people can say there is nothing wrong with creating a lot of profit because it's, it's a business. Mm -hmm. But the, the issue is that the, the PES, when they resell those companies in a very short period of time, mm -hmm. They care really less about the fate of the company or the, uh, the future of the employee's own fate. Uh, that's creating a lot of resentment over and over again. So with hopes of fighting off such aggressive foreign private equity funds, mm -hmm. the Korean government actually introduced the local PFs back in 2004. Now considering that, how far has the local PF market come as of now. Sure, the, the Korean government saw the issue and back in 2004, like you said, they allowed the Korean PF firms to, to grow and, and, and operate actively. Mm -hmm. um, the, in the 2004 uh, period, there were only two Korean PF firms at the time. Two? The, uh, mm -hmm. Two, about $400 million in paid uh, committed capital. In about 10 years nowadays, we see about 300 wow. Korean PF firms mm -hmm. with over $55 billion U.S. dollars in committed capital. That's a whopping over 100% growth mm -hmm. in just about 10 years of time. And um, there are many uh, major Korean PEFs that's well known nowadays, such as MBK Capital, uh, MBK Partners rather, and um, Hanen Company, IMM Investment, Bogo Investment, and Stick. Uh, MBK is the biggest one out there, and they have over $6 billion in committed capital, mm -hmm. and they have a very famous portfolio company such as uh, Home Plus, uh, Koe, CNM, and NEPA. Um, so the Korean PF firms, within just 10 years' time, they are growing so fast. Oh, wow. But then, then can you tell us more about the capital markets law, the revised bill on that, and how it's expected to ease regulations for local PFs? Sure. The, 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 the Korean uh, PF market has been seeing a lot of restrictions compared to the Western market, where in, in case of U.S. and Europe, uh, they only impose uh, public equity uh, funds with more fierce uh, uh, supervision uh, compared to the private uh, market, uh, private fund market. But in Korea, uh, Korean government has been imposing private equity funds with the regulations for public equity funds, mm. so which made the public equity firms to grow with a lot of limitations. You know, the foreign equity, uh, foreign private equity firms, they are not regulated by the Korean uh, government. So when they come to Korea market and compete against Korean uh, uh, counterpart, the Korean PF firms has a lot of restrictions to, to win against right. the foreign uh, you know, competitors. All right, well, um, but then there's still mixed perceptions toward these PEFs. Why, and what are some concerns, and what are some reasons behind those concerns? Well, you know, there are always ups and downs for a single situation. Uh, for a positive perspective, um, when you have a, a lessened up uh, eased up uh, PEF uh, market out there, uh, we're going to expect a lot of transactions on the uh, private equity uh, fund market. Translation, abundant capital for the companies who need cash. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there is a continuing concern that the PEFs will harm the companies in eventuality because the PEFs are not designed to uh, grow those companies in the long term, but rather uh, their job is to extract as much profit as possible in the shortest time possible. And they really care about the uh, company's fate and employees' fate. Like I said, that's creating a lot of issues in the marketplaces. All right. Well, like we said before, local PEFs are emerging as big players in the 
M&A market. And then what, in your opinion, what should they do in order to get ahead of the game in the global market as they look to expand globally? Sure. The private equity fund market is a huge market globally. And there are, there are majors like KKR uh, competing fiercely against each other. Mm. Uh, it's not an easy market to, to succeed or even to survive. You know, the modern private equity uh, market started back in 1946. Mm. It's been about 70 years. Uh, back in, uh, you know, in those 70 years time, there were about three booms and bust periods, which means there are so many data, market data, we can learn from and find a way to uh, get the good deal and close it successfully. The Korean PF firms, 300 nowadays, and they expect about almost 1,000 in, in a few years' time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're new, so they don't understand how the market works. If they can tap into the know-hows and the, the wisdom of the, those market data, uh, they can probably learn a lot and not repeat the same mistakes or same weaknesses again. And if they can also go into the uh, uh, developing markets and build a close relationships, just like the way the global majors did with Korea market past 10 years, uh, they can create a lot of pipelines for the new deal flows and only if they can create the new strategy to uh, take care of the, invest, uh, the, the employees within, the resentment uh, may not repeat itself. All right, let's hope to see much more of that in the future. Sure. Thank sure. you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. And that does it for today's Business Daily. Thank you so much for watching and see you right back here tomorrow at the same time, same place. Until then, goodbye.